It's good to see everybody this evening. Good to see everybody out tonight. I'll uh, be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, it's been a while since I taught a class, and uh, I found out about getting ready for this yesterday morning, so <laughs> a little bit, yeah, a little bit nervous, and probably not as prepared as I'd like to be. But uh, I'm going to be reading quite a bit of scripture, and I think the Lord will take care of my lack of preparation. As long as I'm reading His Word, it should be all right. Amen. Yes. <clears throat> so, I guess I will uh, I can go ahead and say a word of prayer real quick before we get started. Help me out a little bit. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the, the day that you give us. Thank you for all your goodness and your watch care and your blessings to us and the things that you do for us each day. Thank you for the opportunity we have to be here in your house, a time to, to pray to you, a time to sing praises to you, a time to lift you up and, and just read a portion of your word and pray that you will be with us the evening and guide us and help us to learn more about you and just be focused on you today. And um, just pray that you would... Uh, uh, help us in our walk and increase our faith. And we pray that you uh, pray for any lost here and even in the room. We pray for salvation. And I uh, just pray that you would uh, forgive us for our sins and when we did fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I was going to start by talking a little bit about repentance. It's a very important part of the Christian life and Christian walk, and it is a fruit of salvation. Uh, if you're saved, you will repent of your sin, uh, I believe. And if you're not saved, then you might repent to something you did to a person, but not to God. Um, so, um, I was reading a little bit about the definition and wanted to read that and it's defined as to feel or express regret or remorse about one's wrongdoing or sin. And it's also a reference to a change of mind. Um, so we do need to be a repentant people. We need to be concerned about our sin. If we do something wrong or sinful against God, it should bother us. Amen. If it don't bother you, I'd make my call on election sure because something's wrong. We should care about how we live and how we act and the things we do and how we're serving God. Now, we all make mistakes. I mean, I make mistakes. We, we probably sin every day, sometimes in ignorance, and we don't even know about it, but we sin. And we should care about that. It uh, should bother us. Um, and I got a little thing on repentance. Uh, I'll read. I got this on the internet. Um, I'm assuming it's accurate. Um, it's from a King James Bible online website. Um, it's, uh, I just want to read that. But it's talking about the, there are three Greek words used in the New Testament to denote repentance. And one is the verb metamelomai is used of a change of mind, such as to produce regret or even remorse on account of sin, but not necessarily a change of heart. And this word is used with reference to the repentance of Judas. Now, he he felt bad after he realized what he'd done to Christ, but you know he wasn't saved and he didn't have a, a genuine remorse toward God himself for what he had done. He just felt bad. He knew he'd done something that was wrong. And he was you know, around uh, the Pharisees of that day, and the law was an important thing, so he uh, felt bad, but not toward God himself. And... Uh, and then another, another word, uh, the second time, is uh, metanoio, meaning to change one's mind and purpose as the result after knowledge. And this verb with the cognate noun metanoia is used of true repentance, a change of mind and a purpose in life, to which remission of sin is promised. And evangelical repentance consists of a true sense of one's own guilt and sinfulness an apprehension of God's mercy in Christ. An actual hatred of sin. And turning from it to God. 
and a persistent endeavor after a holy life in walking with God in the way of His commandments. The true penitent is conscious of guilt, of pollution, and of helplessness. Thus he apprehends himself to be just what God has always seen him to be and declares him to be. But repentance comprehends not only such a sense of sin, but also an apprehension of mercy, without which there can be no true repentance. And there's a lot of uh, scripture referenced on what I just read that we may get to later if I've got time. But now I'm just going to continue on with the, the Bible with uh, a few verses on uh, on the uh, lesson. So if you would, turn with me to uh, Luke chapter 13 and uh, verse 2. Luke 13 and verse 2. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So, we see uh, the importance of repentance in uh, salvation, and they go hand in hand. If God reveals himself to you and you've, you've been born again, you're going to realize the error of your way. I remember uh, when I was younger, there were some things I did that I really, it didn't bother me uh, until I realized when God saved me and I realized who He was and I realized what He said in this book, that's how we're supposed to act. doesn't matter if I grew up around that or everybody in my family did it or not. I realized it was wrong and I felt really bad and I was ashamed. I know one thing real popular in my, my family uh, was taking the Lord's name in vain. Um, they used to do that quite a bit, and I did too. And after the Lord saved me, and <clears throat> I was in church and started studying, I realized, you know, that that's a sin. You know, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. And uh, I used to, uh, you know, I dropped something. Oh God, or oh Lord, oh Lord have mercy, those kind of things. You hear that all the time. Just about everybody does. Um, and really that's a sin. Uh, we shouldn't do that. Not, if we're not specifically praying or talking or teaching directly about God, and that's not the focus of our conversation, just saying it on a whim, that's a sin. Uh, I'm just giving that as an example because I that was one of the things I used to do a lot. And it really... Uh, made me feel pretty ashamed when I realized that was one of the things I was doing on a daily basis and I was saying it. That sin's just uh, just like uh, lying or cheating or stealing or, or, or just using foul language in general or, or anything else. Uh, um, but anyway, we, we should repent of what we do. Uh, sin is, is a bad thing and, and God hates sin. We see that over and over in the Bible. Um, you know, and I believe it's in Psalms. Uh, the Bible says uh, God is angry with the wicked every day. And Jehovah God uh, will judge sin. And we'll all give an account, and I believe even if we're saved, we'll give an account, uh, and we'll leave rewards in heaven even if, if we don't, uh, even if we are saved, if we're not living like we ought to live. Um, and that should concern us. Um, so, continue on, uh, we'll go to Luke chapter 15, and I'm just going to read the whole chapter. I think it's all really good. I'm starting with verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans 
and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which be no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have killed his have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and, and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost in his family. And they began to be married. And now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, My brother is come. And my father hath killed the fatty calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make marry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him a fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad. Yeah. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. 
So there's a lot going on uh, in this chapter. It's really interesting. But, you know, if, uh, you see, one of the things I, I noticed is we should rejoice if somebody repents. That's a good thing. If somebody does something wrong and they uh, uh, reconcile and they repent of their sin, that's a good thing. Amen. You know, we should be glad to see that. I wish uh, more people repented of their sin. You see people out in the world all the time just living like trash and they don't even care. And, and you see people uh, in our kind of churches that do things they shouldn't do and they don't repent of it. They don't even seem to care. And we should care. And, uh, you know, that is concerning because, uh, like I say, I believe if you're saved, you're going to care about how you live and how you act and what you say and what you do. It does matter. It matters. And God knows what's going on. But, um, you know, we see in, uh, in, in this chapter, you know, what you see in verse 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over the ninety and nine just which need no repentance. So, uh, there's joy in heaven. Joy shall be in heaven. And then in verse 10, again, after the, uh, uh, the woman losing the piece of silver, uh, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So, uh, it is a joyful thing to repent of your sin. We should be in repentance. We do something wrong. Um, if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 3. <clears throat> in verse 2, Matthew chapter 3, and starting in verse 2. I'll just start with the first verse. Uh, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leather and girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance and think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able to raise up these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now, a um, few things here. Uh, you know, in, in verse 2, reading again, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus said the same thing in Matthew 4, 17. You don't have to turn there, but... From the time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So repentance was a um, uh, very important thing that was continually taught throughout the scripture. And, and it is critical for the life of a Christian to repent. <clears throat> and if somebody uh, claims to be saved, there should be repentance in their life. And <clears throat> you notice. Know, Repentance, salvation and repentance go hand in hand and that is always tied together right before baptism. If you really study it out. <clears throat> and then uh, and right here even in, in this part that we just read in Matthew chapter 3 it said uh, and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. So they had remorse for what they done. Jesus revealed himself to them. They recognized the sin and the error of their ways. They confessed their sins. And John baptized. And, uh, <clears throat> and the Pharisees, um, 
they were known to be heartless. They were they were all about the law. They were very rigid. They didn't have uh, a lot of the fruit of the spirit. Uh, they were covetous. There's a verse in the Bible I can't remember where it's at that talks about the Pharisees being covetous. And you know Jesus called them out over and over. They were just uh, do this, do that. It was all about uh, rituals and ceremonial things and washing of the hands and. Uh, doing uh, just certain motions, but they didn't care. They didn't love God with their heart. They didn't repent when they sinned. They were heartless. And then John, he's calling them out here. I mean, he said, you know, he said, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, because they wouldn't do that. He was basically telling the Pharisees to go back to the house. And um, and they thought, you know, and they thought because they were a Jew, all of a sudden there was something, something big. And he called them out here and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able to raise of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And that's why uh, uh, Paul was commanded to go to the Greeks. You know, the uh, Pharisees, a lot of the Jews, they were rejecting Jesus Christ. <coughs> uh, if you would, uh, we'll, we'll go... Uh, I'll read here real quick. Luke uh, 24, 27 just kind of reiterates what I already said about repentance. Uh, Luke uh, 24 and 47 says, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So we got a responsibility to preach this and to tell people they need to repent. Repent. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, repent, repent. We need to be repenting of our sins. And we see uh, very little of that, unfortunately, today. People actually being real concerned about how they're living. Um, and if you would, turn with me to Ezekiel. Back to the Old Testament. Shall he die? And 
again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal, are not your ways unequal. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. So, there again, God is uh, commanding Israel to repent of their sins. Repent, turn away from their wickedness. And if God doesn't reveal Himself and, and uh, quicken you, you're not going to repent to God. You have to know God to repent to Him. So we're dependent on God. Now after you're saved and you know God, you can be rewarded if you live a godly life or God can turn away from you <coughs> if you live an ungodly. And um, in the society we live, uh, more and more people I will say this, I think we have a natural conscience for sin. I think we, we naturally, when we're born, as we grow up, we, we, we know there, there's a right and a wrong. Um, but um, um, when society is constantly doing wicked things around you, I think that influences your ability to uh, repent. Like I say, I don't think you're going to repent to God unless you're saved and you know God. But I think you will feel bad and repent. Like I was telling you the three different types of repentance uh, here, I think you're going to feel bad if you do something wrong, mm -hmm. even if you're not saved. If, if a lost person uh, accidentally uh, hit uh, walking down the uh, Walmart or something bumped into you pretty hard and hurt you and bruised your shoulder or something, they probably feel bad. That doesn't mean they're saved, but they probably feel bad. But we live in a day today where people don't even have a natural conscience for, for sin anymore. A natural, people don't even respect people or have any manners or any kind of anything anymore. That reminded me of uh, in First Timothy, Chapter 4. There was a verse uh, in verse 1 Timothy, chapter 4, and verse 2. I'll just read, start with the first verse. Now the Spirit speaketh expresses in the last time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And I think we've got a lot of that going on today. Uh, a lot of the conscience is getting seared with a hot iron where people don't uh, even seem to recognize the wickedness of their sin because it's everybody else is doing it. It's so popular. Uh, society around us is getting so corrupt. It's more important than ever before to separate yourself. You know, separation uh, is more important now than I think it, 
it was, uh, you know, 50 years ago. I can even remember when I was a little boy, it wasn't that big of a threat to run around uh, on the farm and, and, and go over to a neighbor's house or whatever. But I mean, uh, nowadays, who knows what you, you know? What your neighbor, even your own neighbor's like. The guy right across the street might be a sodomite, or might have been a drug dealer, or a murderer, or a rapist, or who knows what kind of a sicko is around. I mean, sin has gotten so prevalent and so popular, things that nobody would even thought of even existing back just fifty hundred years ago. And now it's everywhere. It's just rampant. I mean, it's a sad day that we live, and uh, you ha- it seems like you have to be more and more protective uh, of your your walk for Christ, your 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 uh, your, uh, your families, uh, to uh, than ever before. Uh, but I think that's signs of the time. So when good things, we can rejoice that the Lord is coming soon. We don't know how soon, but He is coming. And uh, we don't know the day or the hour, but, you know, by the way, we see signs of the times, I do believe that he's coming. Uh, so that is something to be excited about for those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can rejoice in that. Well, um, that concludes my lesson. Um, Appreciate everybody's attention. Um, y'all uh, pray for me uh, that I would be more studious in the Word and learn more about the Word of God and uh, be a better servant and, uh, for my family. And pray for the church and remember uh, Brother Larry and Sister Tom. Father, uh, way, traveling mercies for them.